Good Sunday morning, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We have again another drizzly, foggy, chilly morning for the Mid-South, and unfortunately, not much is going to be changing with that. May see a bit of a reduction in moisture today where it comes to the showers that we have across the Mid-South, but we will see again the potential for some more winter precipitation tonight. Maybe a few flakes flying around out there early this morning, but beyond that, we don't have a lot of activity going on at this time. So if you have any plans for travel, fog and drizzle causing the roadways to be a little bit slick out there. Not frozen, just wet, but that again can cause some problems in and of itself. And we'll talk more about the temperatures into the next several days. Hope you like variety because if you don't, this is not going to be the stable type of weather you get in other parts of the country. Again, what I call boring, you might want to have all the time, but this is not going to be that week as we see a lot of different types of variety out there. Now, if you'd like to see more about the forecast, first of all, thanks for joining us. Secondly, if you can't stick around for the entire weather blog check the blue bar at the bottom of your screen right down there and you can see the forecast scrolling along from right to left and you can find out more about the forecast as well including our seven day forecast that's available at wreg.com slash weather let's see where you're from drop your location and your weather reports into the comments section love to see again your location to give an idea as for just general geography and then also what you're seeing in the way of temperature if you have rainfall amounts from the rain gauge, if you got that weather station for Christmas linked up and ready to go or for the holidays in general, just give us a weather report and see what's going on. And if you're from outside the Mid-South area, let us know where you're from. A few people checking in from Oklahoma and from Ireland over the last couple of days, even from Scotland. So thanks to everybody for joining us and a couple of people out there from around Thailand, believe it or not. So thanks to everybody for checking in so far and hope everybody's having a decent morning across the Mid-South. We'll take a look at webcams and we'll also take a look at some of your weather pictures that you've sent in coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Rest of the day, again, not entirely anybody's big surprise. We're going to be seeing more drizzle than anything else, light amounts for the most part, and dwindling as the day goes along. It's what happens into around the area close to dinner time tonight and afterwards to where we're going to be watching with a lot of interest. Temperatures should be Again, decently above freezing for most of the area, but there is going to be that part north of Memphis and Shelby County that could see some freezing drizzle taking place. Light in nature doesn't look like a huge problem, but once again, it doesn't take much to cause travel delays out there. So please keep that in mind. We'll let you know a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Let's see what's going on out there <clears throat> when it comes to the view at this time. National Mall in D.C. looking very close to what we have here in the Mid-South area. The Capitol Building, the National Mall through here, the Potomac River, and around the Beltway, very foggy and unfortunately drizzly for anybody getting out to see the monuments on Sunday in and around the D.C. area, so not too much different than what we're seeing here. Drizzle on the camera lens, wet roadways around Clarksdale, Mississippi at Heidelberg Elementary at this point in time. So again, this is what we're seeing across much of the Mid-South. Usually you can see the Clark Towers area around Poplar and Mendenhall. Not quite the case this morning. Poplar Pike and Germantown Road right along the railroad tracks and looking back toward Poplar over on that side of the railroad tracks. Again, decently drizzly, but not as foggy as it was yesterday. Temperatures just above freezing and got that wind chill out there as well, so please keep that in mind before you head out the door. Four hundredths of an inch of precipitation there. West Memphis, Arkansas, the I-40, I-55 interchange out there again someplace, but again, the speckles of rain on the camera lens. Can't really see too much out there. And temperatures, again, just above freezing. We're not getting any reports of anything involving slick spots on highways. We are monitoring Arkansas Highway and Transportation Department as well as TDOT and MDOT to see what's going on. And so far, we don't have any reports of anything causing any problems. Wet, yes, not frozen. So good news, again, for that for where that's concerned at this time. And this is the view looking at the, toward that other camera from the Mississippi River. This is our tower cam. The Bridge Trio, the Big River Crossing over here, Martyrs Park down here, and again, lots of speckles of rain on the camera lens, but hardly able to see anything. Less speckles of rainfall, foggy and drizzly in downtown Memphis. So again, great morning for a hot cup of coffee or whatever you've got for a beverage out there as these speckles of rainfall will continue off and on. Metro area seeing the heaviest activity. 
Again, just past about 8 o'clock this morning into around the eastern parts of Shelby County, moving away from us into Fayette County, southwest Tennessee, and northern parts of Mississippi, getting some of that echoes of activity for now. That's the heaviest that we've got, and again, that's really not that much, but it is enough to wet down the roadways once again. Northeast Mississippi, that's where we're also seeing again some areas of scattered showers taking place around Corinth, down to around Oxford. Excuse me for a second as my touch screen is apparently having problems again. Here's what it looks like again across northeast Mississippi, Corinth, Kossuth, Walnut, Ripley, getting some sprinkles out there down toward Tupelo, New Albany, and crossing over into northwestern parts of Alabama. Southwest Tennessee, again, this is the heaviest activity, mainly to the west of Jackson, Shelby County, and then back into around the Tennessee River Valley, all that making its way back up to the north and to the east. And we're not seeing anything, again, in the way of major amounts of frozen precipitation. That's being reserved for areas back to our north and west. You can see a lot more of that taking place here over parts of Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, and back into Ohio, and back to the north and west of there. We are seeing, again, some frozen precipitation around the Red River in Oklahoma and some snow showers east of Kansas City, but just not really looking at too much of anything out into around the area. 32 in Jonesboro, Marsh, Marshall Border. Thank you very much. Frozen rear steps off the deck. Be careful. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Thanks for the report from that area at this point in time. William Boykin, may your coffee cup always stay full. Not if I have anything to say about it. Going to be draining that as soon as we get done here for right now. Phoenix, Arizona, LaTravis Alexander, thanks a lot for dropping on by the show and saying hi to all the Memphis friends and family for this morning. Ripley, Tennessee, Kim Buck, thanks for joining us. Brownsville, Elizabeth Ann Ross, uh, 2.6 inches of rain in Bolivar this weekend. Evan Lax, thanks for joining us, and thanks for that weather report as well. Appreciate that. And everybody else who's checking in for this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, Thanks a lot for dropping on by. Now, the winter weather advisory that was in effect for northeast Arkansas did not touch the News Channel 3 viewing area. That has been allowed to expire, but we still have, it looks like, more advisories back to the north and over to the west of us. Now, at this time, these advisories will continue, it looks like, at least until 9 o'clock this morning. So if you have any plans for travel, through central Missouri. This is where we're watching the worst of the activity from Texas all the way up to Ohio and the Great Lakes. It looks like Fort Smith, Springdale, some travel problems on I-540 early this morning and back up from St. Louis to Springfield and Joplin. So this is going to be some areas you're going to have to watch out for if you're traveling or otherwise into and around the Mid-South area for this morning. And just look at this winter weather going on from Maine to New Mexico. We've got these advisories taking place. Now, we do not have anything showing up in the way of problems for the Mid-South area for right now. And again, this has never been a part of anything involving what we see for portions of the area here, but we still watch for that possibility and reports of that, especially with temperatures like this, lower to mid 30s, right at freezing at St. Agnes, St. Dominic. Now, the good news at this time, I think that the ground temperatures are warm enough that they are not going to be causing a lot of frozen problems out there. And especially as these numbers will be heading upwards over the next several hours, I don't think we're going to see any major slick spots out there tonight might be a bit of a problem there. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Fractions of an inch of rainfall since about midnight, so not doing too bad for there. Now, through the rest of the morning, again, that frozen potential goes north of us and stays away with temperatures rising by the time we hit lunchtime into the mid to upper 30s across much of the area. Most of the rain should be dwindling. There is still going to be the possibility of some light drizzle across much of the mid-south area throughout the rest of the morning, and we stay right about the mid to upper 30s through about dinner time tonight. But Here's the chance we're talking about into around dinner time, just past News Channel 3 at 5, 60 minutes at 6. We see this potential of some light rainfall, maybe some more frozen precipitation, especially where the temperatures are right at to just below freezing. Now, the good news is that we do not see a heavy chance of precipitation. Also, it looks to be very short-lived. It does not look like a major threat. But if you're around, say, uh, Dyersburg, Gibson County, Humboldt, north of Jackson, around the boot heel, western Kentucky, you may see the possibility of some isolated slick spots later tonight if there's enough moisture out of this, which really right now it does not look that way. But once again, we'll be watching this here online and also throughout the rest of the day on News Channel 3, so stay tuned for more there. Now, by the time we're done with Sunday, 
getting into Monday by the time Todd Demers is in here for daybreak. There could be some leftover sprinkles around northeast Mississippi. Oxford, Corinth, Tupelo, Ripley, south of that area, but light and dwindling as colder, drier air moves its way on through. So we should actually see some sunshine coming our way as we get into Monday. Now, as we go toward Tuesday, notice the gray colors here. That's, again, the cloud cover starting to make its way back up from the southwest, and more chances of rainfall will be on the way for the rest of the week. So here's the numbers, again, for today. Mainly just light drizzle out there for the most part, and it will stick around throughout much of the rest of the day. Through this evening, past dinner time and into very early tomorrow morning. I'm still going to keep that chance of freezing drizzle in the forecast, mainly for northwest Tennessee, northeast Arkansas, and the boot heel. I'm really not convinced that we're going to see anything along I-40 or south. So right now, chances really just don't look all that good at this point in time for anything involving major problems. So if you have any travel to do tomorrow morning, stay tuned to News Channel 3, especially tonight at 10, and we'll give you an update as to what's going on there. In the meantime, overnight around daybreak and through tomorrow morning at rush hour, we start to see everything dwindle and move out of the picture. So we should actually see some sunshine breaking through as we get into the rest of Monday out there. So again, we see the possibility for uh, more of that coming on through the area. Thanks a lot to everybody for checking on through, tuning in from Memphis, Thelma Roebuck. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Lachelle Vassar, hope I'm saying that right, from Memphis as well. Good fishing weather. James Smith, well, more power to you for right there. I'm going to spend it indoors with a cup of coffee and taking a nap for a little bit here. Don't want any of the mess in Gibson County. Ricky Lee, Still not convinced we're going to get a lot of that coming up through the area today, but we'll watch that for right now. So again, thanks a lot. Sandra Scott Holden, hi back to you as well. Peace to all. Mac Codeine, hope I'm saying that correctly. Thanks for joining us. And again, thanks to everybody else for checking on in. Jenna Murphy from Memphis, Tennessee as well. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Again, into Tuesday, got some more good, very mild conditions out there and should be rain-free for most of the day, likewise for most of Monday. So we may catch a couple of days break from the rainfall, but toward evening, that's where we start to see the rain chances head back our direction. And that's where we see, again, the potential for rain through Valentine's Day right into the end of the week. And remember I mentioned beforehand, I hope you like variety, lower 40s for highs well below normal for today and tomorrow, just above normal for Tuesday, well above normal, as in about 15 to 20 degrees above normal for Valentine's Day Wednesday and Thursday, pushing 70 degrees. Now, at this time, it does not look like any severe weather. Matter of fact, we don't have any thunderstorms in the forecast at all, just rainfall, and that should be about it for the time being. And that goes right on into next week. There are some signs that we may be looking at some heavier rainfall end of next weekend into next Monday. We'll see how well that pans out 10 days in advance. But for right now, there are signs, but just not great signs that we may see that. But we're going to throw that in the forecast there anyway, so we can kind of keep an eye on that over the next several days. So again, please keep an eye on that for the time being. Michael Saxon, you look like a younger Stephen King. Um, thank you, I hope. I'm hoping that's a compliment anyway. Mid to upper 50s for Tuesday next. And again, a little bit on the cool side, but not seeing anything here in the way of precipitation that is either frozen or severe. So definitely some good news to report on that for the time being. Thanks to everybody for some great weather pictures from those storms that rolled through earlier last week. Amy Cat 79 from the area of West Memphis, Arkansas, showing some of that hail and some of that what's called grapple, ice pellets that's too small for hail but too large for sleet. So we've got a lot of that across much of the area, and you can see a lot of that on the roadways and the other driveways around West Memphis. So thank you very much for that. And James R. Gulledge in and around Humboldt, Tennessee. Nice little sunrise from around the area of Friday morning. So thank you guys very much for that. If you've got pictures, we'd love to see them. Pass them along here and again on our social media pages on my Facebook page, Twitter at Aonic underscore WREG3, Instagram, Aonic no underscore necessary, WREG3, and of course on many other social media pages. Still trying to figure out Snapchat. I wish they would stop changing things on there, but again, good opportunity to learn more. Starting this week, the National Weather Service teaching severe weather spotter training courses again. The spring semester underway. As of Tuesday evening, you can take the first class at Sumner, Mississippi at the Emmett Till Interpretive Center. That'll be this, third, this Tuesday at 6 p.m. These courses are free 
paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars, one of the best ways our tax dollars have ever been spent, in my not-so-humble opinion. Again, looking at these for the opportunity to learn more about what to do beforehand when it comes to severe weather purposes. And there's going to be about a baker's dozen of these across the Mid-South in the next few weeks. Try to get to one of these if you can nearby and learn more about severe weather. You can also learn about what to report back to the National Weather Service via one of these or if you're an amateur radio operator, you can use your rig to get more information relayed and help everybody else stay safe. These are great courses to have, especially if you've never been through severe weather before. Maybe you're brand new to the Mid-South and you've never gone through a tornado warning in your life. This is the time to figure out more about that. These are taught by the National Weather Service meteorologists and personnel. And again, a great opportunity for you to learn a lot more about how to stay safe when severe weather threatens. Where's the one for Memphis and Shelby County? Not on this list yet, but it will be. So keep it tuned for the next several days and weeks. And if you'd like to know more about this, head to this website right here, wreg.com slash weather. Scroll down beneath our forecast and you'll see a graphic like this. And you can get more details about what's going on, where, and who to contact. Really great idea to take this again now when nothing is going on is the time to get ready for severe weather and this is one of the best things that you can possibly do out there. My forecast throughout the rest of the weekend, hopefully, hello computer, okay well this is new we may have, uh, may have to wrap it up on this one if we don't have any uh, computing power left over. If this was working, there we go, thank you, okay. I can get time to take the sledgehammer back out again. Okay, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And if you know me, you know that there's one thing I hate, and that's a cranky computer. Oldies 102.3, Country 92.5 on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. Your forecast throughout the rest of the weekend. And join me again with Bob and Josh Monday morning at 8 o'clock for your forecast on Talkback Live. Sports chat for the Mid-South. Tons of other great information. Some great guests to talk about sports out there. If you can't get the signal because you're too far away, dial them up up online, talkbacklivenetwork.org to find out more about what's going on. That'll wrap it up for this edition of Sunday Morning's Weather Overtime, our exclusive video weather blog, keeping you updated as to what's going on with weather across the Mid-South and beyond. And again, if you have any questions about anything, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. We'll have more tonight on News Channel 3 at 5 and 10, so stay tuned for more on that. And of course, more coming up a little bit later on your forecast update at wreg.com slash weather. Thank Thanks to everybody for joining us. Thanks for the weather reports out there. Everyone stay safe again with the rather rainy conditions out across much of the Mid-South, and we'll keep you updated again throughout the rest of the weekend via on air or online. Stick around for more with News Channel 3. Thanks for joining us for today's weather overtime.